Girl Guiding Headquarters with Julie Bentley, one of our Choreo Prize judges. Julie, thank you very much for having us. You're very welcome. Um, so could you please give us a brief introduction to who you are and what you do? I can. So I'm Julie Bentley and I'm the Chief Executive of Girl Guiding. And Girl Guiding is one of the um, largest charities in the UK for young people. And we are the largest organisation in the UK that is dedicated to girls and young women. Mm, lovely. Um, so what does Girl Guiding actually do um, in practice? So Girl Guiding is an organisation that is entirely about empowering girls and young women mm -hmm. to develop their potential, to reach their aspiration and to grow with confidence. Mm -hmm. And we do that through delivering a programme of activities and adventures and opportunities mm -hmm. for girls from everything from 5 years to 25 years old. And it's entirely about a safe girl learning space mm -hmm. and girls, very importantly, having a huge amount of fun. Uh, but also it's about developing their skills, their insights into things, understanding about the wider world around them and understanding about the context of the lives of girls. But really importantly it's also about getting outdoors, having adventures, going camping, learning new skills mm. and basically just becoming life ready whilst mm. having a great time. Mm. Lovely. And um, what drew you into um, the space of working with children working with girls specifically? Well, I mean, I've always worked in the not-for-profit sector. Mm -hmm. I dedicated my career to that quite deliberately. Um, mm -hmm. And back in the day when I started out, I was a youth worker. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was working with young people uh, in some really deprived areas of South East London. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always been drawn to working with young people because, well, you know, it sounds a bit like a, it sounds a, bit like a Whitney Houston song, doesn't it? But, you know, the young people are our future. <laughs> and also importantly, when I was a young person, I really felt like we got quite a raw deal, that we weren't mm -hmm. taken seriously, it was always presumed that we would be the worst that we could be rather than the best that we could be. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me it's been really important through my career to focus on roles that supported young people to reach their potential and opportunities mm -hmm. and to prove that actually young people have got an enormous amount to contribute and particularly if we give them the opportunity and space to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, where do you take personal inspiration from? Oh, well, I do. <laughs> um, through, through my life, I've had some incredibly inspirational role models um, mm -hmm. who have taught me and I've learned tremendously from them. Um, I had a great role model um, when I was a trainee youth worker who was an older youth worker who really taught me a lot about the role. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another enormous role model for me was my first chief executive who I learned so much from about how to be a manager and a leader and a chief executive. Mm -hmm. But also the young people that I work with inspire me every day. I mean, I go out to go guiding groups and I meet little five-year-olds through up through to 25-year-olds. And they are extraordinary, you know. Our future is very safe in the hands of young people, if the young people and young women go guiding or anything to go by. So it's really invigorating and enriching for me to get out of headquarters mm -hmm. and to go and spend time with our young women. Can you tell us about a project or initiative that you're working on right now and um, that you're excited about? Well, I'm not doing very much of this myself, but I'm going to take the credit for it. Um, because the thing that we're doing right now at Girl Guiding that I'm most excited about is we're developing an entirely new programme for our girls and young women. Uh, so we're going to have a new programme for everybody from age 5 through to 25. And it's being developed in a lot of consultation with their girls and young women about what do you want, what do you need for your future. And we're currently now trialling and testing the new programme with our girls and young women. And we're getting some fantastic feedback about what they do like, what they don't like, what they want us to do differently. And we've also invited our members to submit their own ideas of the programme and we're taking them in, including them in the programme as well. So we're, we're doing a soft launch this year and a full rollout next year and it's going to be absolutely incredible. So whilst I'm not personally doing it, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to carry the torch for that one and say that that is something that I'm really excited yeah, about. Absolutely, that's, that's great. Um, so as you know, one of the UN's SDGs is gender equality um, and it's all about empowering women and girls and alike. So how do you think we can translate that goal from a, from a global context into the UK and make it really meaningful for us there? Well, I mean, unfortunately, I think it is still incredibly relevant to mm. the UK. It really shouldn't be, but it, but it really is. We still have huge disparities in gender equality. Mm -hmm. We still have um, women who are not so well um, represented in the workplace, particularly in certain roles and at certain levels. 
We still have women not paid the same as men for doing the same job. Um, our girls and young women tell us all the time that they, they have a very strong sense that um, employers still want to employ men more than they do women. Yeah. And we also understand that um, from our girls and young women that a huge amount of them um, you know, don't, don't think they're going to have the same opportunities. And that's not because they don't want them, because equally we know from our young women that they're very ambitious and they want to be leaders mm -hmm. in the future but they think that's going to be more difficult for them. Mm. And I think that's because we still live in a society that has very gentle thinking about the roles of girls and women and boys and men. Um, we still live in a society where women are very often objectified in the media, there's a lot of sexual stereotyping. Um, and still, throughout society, it's embedded in society in a way that almost we don't even notice anymore. Mm. But there are expectations around how girls look and behave, and there's much more focus still on how women and girls look physically rather than what's actually in their head and in their heart and in their mind. Mm -hmm. And until we move away from that, we're never gonna have gender equality. Mm -hmm. But I think actually it's also really important that we live in a society where boys and men mm -hmm. are not permitted to behave in any way other than that image of what a man is expected mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think perversely there's something in there about, you know, girls can wear jeans and have short haircuts. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It might be a bit boyish, but that's okay. But for a boy to dress or behave or look in a way that is considered mm -hmm. more traditionally feminine is mm -hmm. still considered a you know, not an acceptable thing. And that goes back to actually what the women and girls are seen as less in society. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to do a huge amount actually still to move our society to a place where mm -hmm. there is that sense of proper parity. Mm -hmm. And so you touched on um, the idea that the, the, the girls that you that you come into contact with feel like they are going to have a kind of tougher time in the workplace. And um, what do you what do you think the kind of current state of gender equality is in the UK workplace? Well, I think as I say, mm -hmm. we know that in most sectors the senior positions are still predominantly taken by men. There isn't equality, even in the not-for-profit sector, which is a huge disappointment to me. The very top roles in, in big charities are still more taken by men than women, despite the fact that most of the workforce or the higher proportion of the workforce is women in the not-for-profit sector. Um, we still know that most of the term roles in society that are the caring professions are seem to be for women mm -hmm. uh, and are not seem to be for men. Mm -hmm. It's unfair on both sides, for men and women. Why can't a man want to be a nurse mm -hmm. or a child care professional? Um, we still see that women in leadership roles in the workplace are often looked at through the lens of whether they're wearing a nice frock that day or what their heels are like rather than what they actually said when they stood up in Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, we also of course need more female role models in decision making roles um, because only through that will we actually achieve change I think. Um, and we need girls and young women to see that professions around STEM subjects are for them. We need them to be encouraged in school to go forward for those roles. Um, and still today, we aren't seeing girls and young women being, you know, encouraged enough to go into those those areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in the workplace there are still a lot of barriers, and we definitely need more strong female role models. And we need those visible role models mm -hmm. to to be um, celebrated for what they're bringing through their intelligence and capability mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than just being diminished to what mm -hmm. they happened to wear mm -hmm. that day. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you're one of our Corey Price judges, um, which is really exciting. Um, so why did you want to get involved with the prize? I, th I thought it sounds like really interesting and innovative mm -hmm. and exciting. Um, you know, it brings together a lot of things that interest me. You know, young people and giving young people the opportunity to explore and express things. Um, but also taking on some of the really, really, really naughty challenges that we face as a humanity, not just as a society in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's going to be really fascinating seeing what comes through, actually. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it felt like a really exciting opportunity. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, what do you think makes it relevant to today's context, um, thinking about the six issues that we've translated from the SDGs? Um, those being social mobility, community resilience, social housing, food security, gender equality, um, yeah. and that's, that's it actually. <laughs> I, I think uh, a lot of those are very relevant to our UK society as well. We mm -hmm. know that we have housing insecurity is a massive issue in the yeah. UK at the moment. We know that we've got far too many people relying on food banks, 
uh, we know we don't have gender equality sorted. So not only is these, are these global issues and are very real issues across the world, but we still have our own issues with these problems mm. in the UK. Um, and our young people, I think, are living in incredibly complex times. You know, politically, it's very volatile, very complex. Um, economically, you know, young people now are expected to have jobs for life. Mm -hmm. They don't know if they're ever going to get a move out of their family and home. Mm -hmm. So the world is changing, particularly brought on by social technologies, advances, new media. Um, and I think young people are learning how to live in this world. And I think as older people, we're struggling to understand this new world and therefore how we can support young people to deal with it. Um, so I think it's incredibly relevant, actually. And, I, and the fact that it uses creativity um, to encourage young people to think about these things and express their views on these things, I think is, is a really liberating and exciting thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, what are you hoping to see from the prize entry? I'm hoping to be really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping to see some things that make me go, oh my god, that really could work. That really could be something quite transformational yeah. in relation to one or two of these issues. And what would be really fantastic is if through the entries we see different things that if we brought together one or two different examples, one or two different entries around one issue, mm -hmm. that really could actually connect up and, and bring some real solutions to something. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to be really surprised. Mm. I'm hoping to be challenged. I'm hoping, you know, I'm quite old now, I'm 48. So I'm hoping that they're all going to read things like, hey, that's ridiculous, we couldn't do that. And then <laughs> other people are saying, oh, but we could do that. Mm. Why couldn't we do mm. that? So, yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much for having us and for speaking to us this morning. Yeah, great. Um, for more information about Corio and the Corio Prize, please go to www.corio.co.